Hey everyone, welcome to Marvel Medicine. My name is Suhaib Chaudhry. So this lecture is on compliance and it's really important, uh, you know, of a concept for you all to understand. The reason why is because it applies to so many different things like cardiac, respiratory, and vascular physiology. Understanding this concept will allow you to understand pathophysiology in all of these different areas. And I'll show you how, how that is. So, compliance. First off, what does it mean in the English language? So if I, you know, imagine someone who's compliant, they're easy to get along with and they're pretty friendly, right? So when I hear the word compliant, I think responsive, easy, agreeable, and stretchable, right? So it's kind of weird, but take this meaning and apply it to a piece of human tissue. You know, let's say the lungs or something like that. If the tissue is really compliant, it's again, easy, agreeable, stretchable. It can expand easily without using a lot of force. So if something isn't compliant, it'll be much harder to stretch out and expand. Now, the next thing I want you to look at is pressure and volume. You need to understand the relationship between these two. Now, I know we mentioned that in intrapleural spaces and in the lungs, as you know, pressure uh, increases, volume decreases and vice versa. However, if you take a closed space like a ventricle, the, what happens is if I increase volume, pressure is going to increase too, right? Because of a liquid in a space. Let's say I have a balloon and let's say I fill it with about 20 milliliters of water. This is just an example. There'll be a certain pressure inside the balloon, right? So again, a certain volume will make a certain pressure. The formula you need to remember is compliance equals a change in volume over a change in pressure. So if I change a volume in a certain space, a certain pressure change will occur. So this balloon, it has a certain compliance to it. It's thin, it's able to stretch out. Now, let's make a balloon that is thicker in texture. Would this make it more or less compliant? Just so take a look at it. Less, right? Visualize it. Imagine a second balloon that's twice as thick and picture it like putting the same amount of water into it, about 20 milliliters. Which balloon would have a higher pressure inside? The thicker texture one, right? It just makes sense. Apply this concept, the same concept, to arteries and veins. And when you look at histological slides of arteries and veins, you can see that arteries are thick, rubbery, whereas veins are rubbery as well, but they're thinner. Let's take two vessels, blood vessels. One is an artery, the red one, and the other one is a vein, the blue one. I'm going to put 20 milliliters of blood in each of them. Now again, guys, remember, this is just an example, but it'll help you understand. Which one would have a higher pressure after I put in the 20 milliliters of blood? The artery, right? Why? Because the artery, again, is less compliant. It has that thicker, uh, more rubbery uh, texture to it. For the same amount of volume, remember, 20 milliliters, there's a higher pressure in the artery. So again, meaning it's less compliant. You could even look at it mathematically. So I'm putting in the same amount of volume, the volume change is the same, 20 milliliters, but the pressure change is much higher in the artery. Now, you know how veins have lower pressure than the arteries and that Veins kind of act like uh, reservoirs of blood, and you'll hear you're, you'll hear that a lot in the hospital and in and, uh, your classes. That it's a reservoir where blood pools and can hold large quantities. So it makes sense that with exercise, when you squeeze skeletal muscles, you're you know curling weights or doing squats or something along those lines. You're squeezing skeletal muscles, and what's running beside the vessels? Of the skeletal muscles are your blood vessels, right? The veins. And what happens is the muscles squeeze the veins and send that blood back up to the heart. That's one of the ways your preload increases with exercise. The next thing I want you to think of is the compliance of the heart. What pathology can reduce the compliance of the heart? So what am I asking you? What can make the heart thicker, more rubbery, and just less less easily stretchable so a couple pathology examples of this amyloidosis 
and hemochromatosis, right? They'll, they're infiltrative diseases that infiltrate into the myocardial cells and the muscle cells and make it thicker in texture and less easily stretchable. Now, we're gonna take two hearts, a normal one with a normal ventricle, normal muscle texture, normal myocardial cells, and a heart that has all this infiltrative disease in it, making it thicker, tougher, and less compliant. Again, the normal heart with a thin, normal wall, and the other heart, it's thicker. I'm going to fill both of these hearts with the same amount of blood, 50 milliliters of blood in each. Now, I want you to think, which heart would have a higher pressure? The less compliant one, right? That's the thicker heart. Now, not only that, but do you think the ventricle will be able to stretch out and fill up the way normal hearts do? No, right? It wouldn't stretch out and be able to...